How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a list of favorites and how we can sort that list so that every time you create some sort of list in your application you're going to be able to favorite an item and you're going to be able to sort that item by whether it has been favorited or not. So as you can see we can toggle the favorites and we can add multiple and we can toggle the favorites again and they're going to appear nicely in a list that has been sorted as soon as we click on toggle. And something nice about this application is that we can exit it and we can completely kill the app. And as soon as we reopen it, we're going to have our favorites exactly where we left them. So it's also going to persist the data. And once again, you can add some more favorites to whatever items you want. This is going to be applicable to any kind of list and you can sort it just by clicking a toggle button. Or another possibility of course would be to add another screen that only has the favorites that the user has decided to favorite. So it's a very simple project, but it's also something very important for when you're creating applications is the ability to actually toggle favorites so the user can always go back there and find what they had earlier. So the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and open a fresh new Xcode project. And we're going to go ahead and hold Command plus N to create a new file. And this will just be a Swift file, which is going to be called model. And this is just going to be some sample model data. We want to have something we can insert into the list and it's going to be modeled according to this model over here. So let's go ahead and create that incredibly fast. So struct item, which will conform to identifiable and it will also be codable. And the first thing we want to do is specify an ID, which will be of type integer, a title of type string, a var description of type string, and also a variable is faved. And that's gonna be of type Boolean. Next, we can go ahead and create a static variable because we actually want to add some sample items to our preview. So sample items, which is going to be an array of the items that we've just created. And let's go ahead and create this. So inside, we need to go ahead and create a temp list, which is going to equal an empty array of item. Then we're going to go for i in one to 20. So we're going to create 20 items. We're going to let the ID equal the current integer. Then we need to let the title equal a title with the interpolated integer. And then let description equal this is a sample description. And we want to add this information to the list. So go ahead and call template.append and remove the contents of, but we're just going to go ahead and create a new item, which is going to take an ID, which of course is ID, a title, a description, which is going to be set to description, and is faved is just going to be set initially to false. Finally, after having created this loop, we need to go ahead and return the temporary list. So that will take care of creating our sample items. Next, you want to go back to your sidebar and hold Command plus N so we can create a database. And we're just going to call this database, which is just going to use user defaults to keep things simple. So here we're going to create a final class called database. And the first thing we need to provide is a key. So private let favorite key. And that's just going to equal any key you want. And to keep this simple, I'm just going to call it fav underscore key. Then we're going to create a function which is going to save an array. And this is going to be an array of items, which is going to be a set of integer. And we're going to convert this immediately into an array. So let the array equal an array of items. Then right below that, we need to go ahead and call user defaults dot standard. And we want to set the value of the array for the key of the favorite key. So that's going to put the array into our user defaults so we can get it back later. And we also need to create a function that loads the data. So function load, and it's going to return to us a set of integer. And first we want to let the array equal the user defaults dot standard dot array for key fav key. And we need to cast this as an integer or as actually an array of integer, else it's just going to be an empty array of integer like that. And we're going to return a set of the array. And it's important that we turn these into sets because we want to make sure that we have no duplicate instances of the items in the array. And these are just going to be a list of IDs. So it's going to be quite simple. And Xcode is complaining because I took this parentheses too far. It should just go to the fav key part and the rest is going to be outside of the parentheses. 
But that will take care of the database class. All we need to do is save items and load items. Now let's go ahead and create a new Swift file, which is going to be the view model. So content view model. And this is going to be an extension on content view. So we can only use it there. And then we need to create the final class of the view model, which will conform to the observable object protocol. Now, the first thing we're going to take care of are the variables. So the first one is at published var items, which is going to equal an empty array of item initially. Then we also have an at published variable, which is going to toggle between showing the favorites and not showing the favorites. So showing faves, which will equal false initially and at published var saved items. And this is going to store a set of integer, which is going to be the ID of each item. And just for debugging purposes, we're going to have one and seven. So item one is going to be favorited and number seven is going to be favorited. So these are the IDs of the item. Then we need to go ahead and create a computed property. So here we'll type in var filtered items, which will be of type item. And inside here, we need to go if showing faves is true, then we're going to go ahead and return items.filter and you can just delete what's inside there. And we're going to return a closure. So saved items dot contains and inside here, we need to use the dollar sign dot ID. So it's going to check for all of the IDs inside the saved items. And if the ID is matching the one of the items over here, it's going to return it in a new list so that we will only get the items back where we have a match of IDs. So essentially it's going to compare one list to another. And if the IDs are matching, it's a favorite. Else we're going to go ahead and just return the items as they are. And right below this variable, we're going to go ahead and create an instance of our database so that we can use it. So here we're just going to type in database and initialize it. And right after that, we need to go ahead and create an initializer. And here it's going to take care of assigning the items to the item array or loading data from the database. So here we'll go ahead and type in self dot saved items is going to equal db dot load. Otherwise, we're also going to go ahead and type in self dot items is going to equal item dot sample items. And if you want to debug and actually see the results of one and seven, you're going to have to comment this out. So we're just going to do that initially. So nothing is going to be loaded when we restart the app, but we are going to see items one and seven being toggled. We'll come back later and uncomment this so we can actually see what happens when we load from our database, of course. But right below that, we need to go ahead and create a few more functions. And the first one I want to create is the sorting faves function. So this one's going to be very simple. We're just going to call a with animation, which is going to import Swift UI, of course. And we're going to open a closure and toggle showing faves. And that's all we have to do to sort the favorites. It's going to go from true to false and from false to true. Then we need to go ahead and create a function and check whether a certain item contains the ID we're comparing from the favorite items. So here we're just going to type in contains, which is going to have an underscore item for item, and it's going to return a Boolean. So if the saved item contains the item dot ID, that means we're going to have matching IDs and those are going to be the hearts that are going to be present. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. And we also need to go ahead and create a function called toggle fave. And this is going to look a lot like the sort faves function. But what this is going to do is if we tap on a heart, it's going to save it to the database. Otherwise, if we tap on it again, it's going to remove it from the database. So it's going to toggle the state of whether the heart has been triggered or not. So we need to also specify an item for what we want to save. And if contains item of item. So if whatever we tapped on contains that item, then we're going to go ahead and type in saved items dot remove. And inside here, we're going to pass the item dot ID. Else we're going to go ahead and type in saved items dot insert. And here we can type the item dot ID as well. And whatever we do, we need to also go ahead and call db dot save. And we want to save the saved items. So we get a new list saved into our database. 
So once again, this just takes care of popping items in and out of the current saved items list. And that's actually all we have to do right now in our view model. Now we can go ahead and open the sidebar and open the content view and finish this application. So as always, we need to go ahead and first create a state object of private var view model, which will equal view model. Then we need to take away the text and replace it with a V stack. And the first thing we want to add is a button, which is going to say toggle favorites. And the action is going to be set to vm.sortfavorites. And this button is going to have some padding as well. So if we run the application right now, we should just see a button in the center of the screen, which is a good start, but we also want to have a list of course. So go ahead and add this list. And inside the list, we're going to go ahead and add a for each loop, which is going to take the vm.filteredItems. And for each item in this filtered items, we're going to do the following. So let's close this sidebar so we have some more space. And the first thing we want to do is create an h stack, which is going to hold a v stack with the alignment set to dot leading. And inside here, we can go ahead and add a text with the item dot title. And as you can see, we have the titles immediately, which is great, with the font set to dot headline. And we can actually copy this line, paste it right under, because all we have to do here is replace this with description and change this with subheadline, so it's a bit smaller. Then inside the H stack, we're going to go ahead and add a spacer. And then right below the spacer, we need to go ahead and create an image. And the image name is going to be, of course, a system name. But this is going to depend highly on whether the list contains the certain item. And if the list contains this item, then we're going to go ahead and return a heart dot fill. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and just return a heart. So as you can see, item one and seven are being filled because the list does contain the item that we've specified. If we go back to our content view model down here, you can see we specified one and seven. And what the contains does is check whether the item is contained in the saved items. So if the item ID is inside both the saved items and the regular items, it's going to register it as a favorite. So back inside the content view, we just want to edit this a bit more and we can go ahead and add a foreground color of dot red because that looks much more natural. And the on tap gesture for this is just going to go ahead and call vm.togglefav for the item of item. And finally, we're going to go ahead and just add a corner radius to the list and that's just going to be of 10. So right now we can go ahead and run the application. So let's go ahead and see how that works. All right, so here we are with the application. Now it's running and we can scroll through the list of items, of course. And if we toggle one, it's going to fill the heart. If we untoggle it, it's going to take it away. We can also untoggle the ones that are already there. And we can click on toggle favorites, which is going to remove the items from the list. And we can retoggle the items, of course, if we want to. So the list is working fine. The only problem now is that we want to make sure this stuff saves. And if we go ahead and tap on title two, and exit the app, you're going to notice that once we come back to our favorite project, it's not going to be saved, or it actually is going to be saved. But the only problem is that in our content view model, we went ahead and commented out that we want to load the saved items. So here we can go ahead and actually load them just by doing that. And if we rerun the application, we're now going to have the saved item right here in the list as we had previously. So let's go ahead and toggle some more. Let's say 10 and nine should be favorited. We can go ahead and toggle the favorites and it will only show us the favorites. And if we go ahead and remove the item, and actually I don't know how the iPhone SE actually works. So let's go ahead and rerun the project. And when you rerun the project, you'll notice that item nine and 10 have been saved and they are favorited and everything's working perfectly for these lists. So that's just a basic example on how you can create favorites for your lists. Just make sure you have two lists to compare and you want to compare something that's unique, such as an ID. So you can always look for that later. And I also want to mention that this project is available in the description down below, just in case you miss something or want to copy something, feel more than free to check out my GitHub repository and grab it from there. But otherwise guys, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.